Everyday Juggler, your source for juggling highlights, interviews, tutorials, and reviews. And now your host, Sean Livingston. What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to this edition of Everyday Juggler Profiles. Today, we get to hang out with Jeff Harden. Jeff uh, has been posting videos on YouTube, you may have seen, under the alias The Brook Juggler. He's working on starting a business where he can sell good quality juggling props at a more affordable price, which is pretty awesome. So we're having him on to hear a little bit about that. Just been juggling for, uh, well, since he was 12, but that's not really his main focus now. He is a performer. He he does diving, like high diving stuff, which is pretty cool. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Jeff, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about you, uh, where you're from, and what you're most excited about when it comes to juggling right now. Um, well, I'm from Frederick, Maryland, originally, um, so I guess that qualifies as Western Maryland. But um, A fellow Marylander, like yeah. that. Yep, yeah. between the two of us, we have the state <laughs> encompassed. Well, there's a, you know, I noticed that there's going to be a, a girl from the Eastern Shore featured in a Tricks of the Month later this year, so. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so between the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, um, but I'm sorry. What was the next part of the question? So, I'm sorry, I distracted you. <laughs> uh, what you're most excited about when it comes to juggling right now? Um, well, obviously, this project has been uh, it, just everything I'm thinking about for the last probably two, week and a half, two weeks. Um, but just juggling as a whole, uh, I finally started playing with five ball sight swaps, and I put it off for a very long time. Um, but I uh, started playing with them, and they're just starting to click. I can't quite run them, but uh, I'm getting there. It's, it's uh, I don't know, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, where, where are you uh, finding the patterns that you are practicing at the moment? Um, I am scouring YouTube. Uh, I basically, when, whenever I try to learn a new trick... Um, that I don't just doesn't just happen organically. Um, I basically just type in the medium and click on the top link and then keep going and down until I see something that a, I think I could do or B is just too awesome to not give it a whirl. So now you're 28, you started juggling when you were 12, what kind of got you into it and what kept you going? Um, well, to, to be honest, I started juggling cause I got grounded a lot. Uh, I, growing up, I was always really into hobby hobbies that required, uh, an element of skill. Um, I guess talent based hobbies. Uh, and it was kind of, I was in my room and I had a set of Cal Ripken decorative baseballs when he was, uh, breaking the Iron Man record, and uh, I don't know. I was just kind of bored and just picked him up one day and, I don't know, dropped him until I stopped dropping him. And, uh, yeah, I, I got I got kind of into it for a year or two, and that's, uh, that's how I started. You said that you were into other skill toys as well, so what else would you uh, – what else were you into? <laughs> Um, well, I would say it definitely, it started with devil sticks as far as skill toys went. Um, I think I was probably in fourth grade when they swept the nation or at least my little corner of it. And, um, I don't know something about it. Uh, everybody seemed to have a set and everybody seemed to be, uh, aggressively mediocre (laughs) <laughs> and um i i don't know i just <laughs> worse than that i think if i remember uh, correctly <laughs> uh, um and i don't know something just kind of clicked in my brain and and i just really obsessed over it and i uh, i saw what people around me were doing and i went okay that's cool but what if i did this and i just went absolutely crazy with them and then uh i think that lasted all of maybe a year 
probably mm-hmm. closer to six months, and I put them down, and every once in a while I'll pick them up. But I, I got everything I, I needed from them and, and just kind of moved on. Mm-hmm. And from there I went to yo-yos, uh, skateboarding eventually uh, took up a huge part of my life, and I don't know. I, I bounce back and forth between hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I remember when the devil stick was, you know, big, I think when I was also in fourth grade, coincidentally, and <laughs> um, my brother had one. I didn't have one. He was four years older than me, and I would use his, and my goal was always just to get better to him at these things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was what I did, and and then I never touched it again. But I remember the yo-yo craze, too. I uh, I remember when I got my first ball-bearing yo-yo. Oh, weren't, wasn't it amazing? <laughs> it was so great. Just, you can sleep it forever. <laughs> yeah, what, what's it? What's the one where you make like a triangle, like and then? Oh, the uh, the cradle. Yeah, or, it's like cat, um, I don't know, cat's cradle. No, that's a that's a string thing. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Or remember. It might just be the cradle. Um, do you remember? Uh, I don't know if you dealt with this, but I uh, I remember there was a point in my yo-yo phase where I was with completely with no sense of irony or humor, trying to explain to my parents that no, it can't be any yo-yo. Like I have to get a good yo-yo, and they're like, "The toy you can get for fifty cents. You need <laughs> a good one." Like, yes. Why don't you get this? <laughs> that didn't go. It didn't go like that with me. My dad got into it too. Oh, cool. <laughs> so I don't know if there was like the Bumblebee yo-yo. It was like oh, a, yeah. 120 bucks or something. That's the one my dad got. <laughs> oh well, yeah. I don't. I. Uh... <laughs> That's awesome because my parents looked at me like I was an idiot, and <laughs> I'm just like, but it's got these parts and a bearing. <laughs> And no, you, me and my dad, we were around the world all day. Yeah, nice. <laughs> cool. That's awesome. So now these days you're a, a high diver doing like stunt stuff. Uh, where do you do that and how would you get into it? Um, the last couple of years I've been doing it in Lancaster, Pennsylvania uh, at a children's theme park called Dutch Wonderland. And um, I, I was a diver in high school. Uh, that actually – all my hobbies seemed to lead from one to the other very organically. And, uh, I got into diving through skateboarding cause the coach kind of saw me screwing around one summer. He was like, Hey, are you going to join the diving team? I'm like, there's a team for this. Absolutely. Um, so I did that all through high school and then I got to the end of high school and I just kind of, um, I hit like a stagnant point. And one of the guys that had coached around my county, uh, he knew my personality. He knew, um, you know, where I was as an athlete, but also, um, you know, I was kind of a class clown. And he he knew that personality and thought I'd be good at it. And he he actually made a call before he talked to me about it. So when he presented it to me, he's like, hey, I think you'd be really good at this. What do you think? And I was like, oh, that sounds awesome. He goes, cool. Uh, here's a business card. This guy's expecting your call in an hour. <laughs> and I went, oh, let's go. <laughs> That's awesome. So that was how many years ago? Uh, that was in 2005, so just about 11 years ago. You had any uh, near-death experiences yet? Oh, man. Um, I won't say near-death, uh, but I have had so many big injuries, small injuries. Uh, I... I fractured my eye socket at one point. Oh man! Uh, which is something that you'd never think would come up, but a uh, uh, couple of broken bones, a uh, bunch of fractures, a couple of concussions. Um, this is almost, from hitting the water. Uh, among other things, uh, the eye socket thing. There's a gag in in one of the shows where you take a ten foot two by eight and you hang it about. Okay, well, this is a computer screen. So that, you hang it about a foot and a half to two feet off the front of a diving board, and a person stands on that end, another person stands on the back, and then the, the back person steps off, the guy drops into the pool. Mm. Um, well, whoever drops into the pool has to look up and get the board and make sure they get it out of the way so nobody lands on it. And I was at the bottom of the pool just looking up, waiting for the, the board to 
up here and it appeared <laughs> right in my face. Oh man, that <laughs> sucks. I got I got really lucky. Um, it hit me right about here, and so if it had gone a half an inch in any direction, I would have lost like my eye, shattered my nose, lost my teeth. So um, I got as lucky as you can get in that situation. But uh, yeah, it 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 rocked me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Man, that's crazy. Whew. So uh, performing in in general, uh, how do you like it? Uh, I I I absolutely love it. Um, there's I I tend to gravitate towards the goofier roles, but uh, in the last few years, I've kind of grown beyond that and and taken on like the bad guy roles or or that. But um, there's something about just getting into another person's headspace and and just going at it as hard as you can that I I love. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Do you see yourself ever? Uh incorporating juggling into performances Uh, i actually have um one of the characters i play at dutch wonderland is a jester so there are little spots where i've managed to sneak a couple clubs on stage or uh some some balls and uh, i've thrown it in it gets kind of tricky uh because they're outdoors and there's actually one spot that i uh an entire summer i juggled every time i played that character um where i was staring almost directly into the sun (laughs) <laughs> oh no. Uh and I was just I refused to let it go. I was like, nope, this is a the perfect spot to do it. I'm just gonna do it. And uh it was it got to the point where I was ending, I was using clubs and I would end with a one up pirouette and I was literally I'd throw it up, spin around, and just kind of grab. Because <laughs> you couldn't uh, see. Yeah. Had no idea where the club was. <laughs> and needless to say, now you need glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it probably wasn't the uh, healthiest of choices, but <laughs> it was fun. That's great. Uh, have you experimented with any other uh, juggling props? Um, actually, it kind of speaks to my uh, background with with hobbies. But I have, uh, I've got a staff. I've got poi, uh, meteor. Which uh, you know what a meteor is? Yeah. Um, I can't say I'm any good at it, but for some reason I figured out this move where you kind of like wrap it around itself and you can fire it, and I feel like a superhero every time. <laughs> um, That's great. But, but yeah, I've got I've got a ton of different props that I like playing around with, so if I ever get fed up with something, I'll just go, okay, well, I'm going to play with the cane and the hat today. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Yeah, it sounds like uh, you might be able to put a little show together. Yeah, maybe one day. <laughs> See you on Carnival. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I honestly, I I have thought about doing juggling shows, but it's never. I don't know. I've never really considered doing like a straight juggling show, like on a cruise ship or anything. Um, one thought I had that I, I've always thought would be a really cool idea is to do almost like a motivational speaking type thing at mm. schools. That would be awesome. Because um, juggling is just it's it's an amazing hobby that has a ton of benefits and I think it'd be a cool venue cause you've got entertainment, but then you're also kind of teaching the kids. Yeah. Have you, um, did you see the interview I did with Bron Carly? It was two or three of them ago. Uh, maybe I'm really bad with okay. names. So he's, he's a, uh, he's the beatbox bounce juggler is, Oh no, I haven't watched that one yet. Um, that's, he doesn't do schools primarily, but, that's kind of his that's like his niche that's like he he loves being inspirational to the students um and using juggling as a way to engage them um so i would definitely check out his stuff it might be uh inspirational to you all right um yeah i'm not sure why i i saw it up there um it might have just been the length was that a really long one uh that one was a little bit longer yeah uh that might have been but yeah i'll check that out when we're when we're done here cool all right, so as I mentioned in the intro, you are you've got a channel called the Brook Juggler Project. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. What is it, and why'd you start it? Okay, um, well, it is essentially um, just I I want to make high quality props uh, cheap. That's boiled down to its simplest form. Uh, I want to make really good stuff for as little as I can uh, feasibly sell it for. And I got into it kind of, um, it was kind of a twofold thing. 
uh, first, when I got back into juggling as an adult, um, I was I was really obsessed with it. And for a couple months, I was working with a guy who had his own props and uh, had a ton of props. So I didn't really have to worry about the cost much because you know they were around. And then when that show ended, uh, I went, oh, so I got to buy my own stuff. So, uh, and I started looking at at all the the top of the line stuff and just went, holy cow, this is all really pricey. Uh, and for a while, I put it off. I, uh, my first set of clubs were plungers from the dollar store. They ran me four dollars and fifty cents for three of them. Mm. Um, and for a while, I put it off and just I did what I could to just have something around. Um, and then, you know, eventually I got the 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 nice props. And uh, even uh, don't get me wrong, I've I've had Dubai clubs, I've had PX3 clubs, and a couple other different clubs, and and I absolutely love them, and I'm super excited every time I get them. Uh, but there's always a little part of me that goes. But that's so much money, <laughs> um, and and it, it it occurred to me a couple years ago. I was like, you know, I wonder how many kids out there like would juggle if it wasn't for you know the price tag because that's you know asking your I imagine as a kid asking your parents like, hey, can you drop a hundred, two hundred bucks on these things that I'm going to deliberately throw in the air and destroy? Uh, <laughs> it might not go well, and. So a couple years ago, I had the thought, um, I, I've made a lot of my own props, and I've gotten decent at it. Um, I usually do the bare minimum of work t- to just have something to uh, to use, but occasionally I would make a really nice one. Like I have a meteor that I hand-braided leather straps, and uh, I don't think I've ever swung it around because it is too too pretty. <laughs> Um, but I, I had a lot of experience with making props at that point. And I was like, I just had the thought like, you know, why couldn't I just start a company, make stuff cheap, sell it cheap, do cool stuff with, you know, like the community of juggling and with like kids and be an awesome idea. And I just went, it would take too much. And I just kind of dismissed the thought. And then a couple, I, I guess a week or two ago now, um, just the perfect storm of conversations. I had three or four conversations with different people about different things, and not all of them were necessarily about juggling even, but just the right dominoes fell. And I revisited the thought and went, you know what? It would take some time and it takes some energy, but really what do I have to lose? And I just went, okay, you know what? Let's do this. And I, I, I put the page up that night. The next day I had a video up. Um, and just went here we go let's see if it works Mm -hmm. uh have you gotten any response from any of that stuff um i've i've gotten a little bit of response um i haven't seen too terribly much from people that are outside my um immediate social circles but the people in my social circles seem to be very receptive to the idea um even people that aren't jugglers Mm -hmm. uh they, they they dig the idea and it has led me to, I've had uh, a little bit of, ex- not exposure, um, but interaction with people that I don't know um, that saw the idea and, and th- they, they really like it and they, they, they get it. And I actually had one lady donated $10 to me. Uh, she found my page by mistake and thought it was a cool idea. That's awesome. Uh, but so yeah, I've, I've I don't know. Okay, so what um, props are you most excited about making? Uh, definitely the clubs. Um, yeah. uh, Russians are really easy. They're, they're a very simple formula. Uh, but composite clubs, they, you know, there's really just one piece. Um, there's a lot of reference material. The Green Club Project, I think, is really well known. Uh, they use plastic bottles, but uh, I think... It'll be really cool to produce, you know, a club that looks like a club, uh, for you know, for not very much money. And I'm really excited to get going with that because I, I've made a ton of clubs, and some of them have been close. But I'm really excited to make one. And, and when I say, "Hey, look what I made," nobody goes, "Is that a Nerf football?" 
Like, <laughs> yeah. Those um, clubs were awesome. You laugh, but they juggled really well. <laughs> uh, I'm sure they did. I have no doubt. No doubt. But I would like to see it one day. Uh, I don't have them, but I, <laughs> they're not hard to make. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's great. I, I have a set of, of Delphins, and, uh, yeah, those things were pricey. Yeah. So I'm with you. I understand. Okay, so uh, lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. So for anybody watching this video, what are a couple different ways that we can support you? Uh, to help make this happen, um, well, I, <laughs> uh, I have been asking for donations. I'm, I've really tried to not be pushy or, um, as I, as I mentioned to you when we were speaking before this, uh, slimy, uh, because it's, it's not, um, I don't like that. That's not what I'm doing. Uh, but I do have a GoFundMe account that's up, and uh, I'm asking for donations and hoping for donations. Um, but really, what I've I've really been pushing for people to do is uh, uh, liking, commenting, and sharing just because every time somebody does that, it opens it up that more people will see it. And I figure the more people will see it, the more likely I am to get people to donate. Um, and I've really been pushing for that. Uh, I, I've invested a little bit of my own money at this point but it's just i uh i'm not rich so I'm, I'm really pushing for the donations but even for people like you know my target audience is are the people that can't afford clubs so i i understand you know like <laughs> i'm i'm broke too but if i can get enough people behind it I, I think it is a really cool idea that you know people seem to be receptive of so i think just getting exposure will really help start driving this thing mm -hmm. So, I mean, just to be clear for anybody watching, uh, uh, you're doing this to make lots of money or? <laughs> uh, no. And, and I've had a few phone calls with people that are just trying to help. Um, but one thing I have remained firm on is that the whole point of this is not to make a million dollars. It's to make a million jugglers. To uh, I've used that line a couple oh, times that's now. Great line. Great line. Uh, but, you know, it's it's really – I just want to get props in the hands of as many people as I can. Um, it obviously for – for it to work, I do have to make some profit so that I can throw that back into the company. And, you know, if one day I end up quitting my job, I'll have to afford to pay myself to do it. Um, but I, I really don't care about the profit at all. I just – I think it's it's a cool idea that, you know, we could really – juggling's by no means a small group of people – uh, worldwide, you know, there's probably, it's probably in the millions, but I, I think we could almost make it as, uh, ubiquitous as like basketball, <laughs> just really make it a commonplace hobby. And it's an awesome hobby to have that anybody can do. And, uh, so yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to make the community bigger, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's great. So you're on a mission to make millions of jugglers yeah and uh if this is what if this is one step to that that mission then yep this is this is the first step and and somebody told me well you know what's to stop a big company from just lowering their prices and i went that'd be awesome <laughs> you know <laughs> like if this fails and i i end up you know not starting this company because you know everybody else out there went okay we'll sell our clubs for 20 bucks a piece Cool. I still made a difference. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. Uh, there are more important things to worry about than money. Yeah, yeah. That's probably not going to happen. What? Anyway, <laughs> so don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Great. All right. So back to some juggling. We we'll do uh, the, some quick fire questions. When you juggle, what's your favorite trick or pattern to do? Um. I don't really know what it's called. Um, it's this little combo I do. I do it every time I play pool. I pick up three balls and I do it. Every time I pick up three balls ever, it's what I start with. But it's a false shower. Um, it, it's a false shower that I go into multiplexes with each hand. And then I usually end it with a weave through the pattern. Mm. And for some reason, I... It's super simple. Uh, it just 
it just hits me the right way. I just I just love that pattern. Cool. Uh, what about when you're seeing other people juggle? What do you like to watch? Um, ooh, that's that's a hard one because there's so many really cool things out there. Um, but the guy that got me into juggling, uh, his name's Brandon Burchak, and he's actually a juggler for uh, the Han Show in China right now. And uh, he does just amazing things with club flourishes. Um, I could watch him just spin his clubs around on his hands, um, but he does, does like Rubenstein's Revenge with a flourish in between and flourish to back crosses. And for some reason, it's just the prettiest thing, and I, I, I love watching it. Mm-hmm. Quite elegant to watch, I can imagine. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite prop to juggle? Uh, three ball, easily. Okay. Uh, when I first really got into it, uh, everybody's like, well, you got to work on numbers and you got to work on clubs. And at the end of the day, I, if I could just have three, I'd be fine. <laughs> I, I love it. That's great. Well, I mean, that is, I would say that's, it's quite, it's quite popular right now, uh, to be really creative with three balls. There's a lot of great three ball jugglers out there. Uh, you like Russians or beanbags? Um, I go back and forth. Uh, I do really like beanbags, but I usually, uh, I usually settle on Russians. I really like, uh, I, I like the feeling of having like a solid ball in my hand, but they are easier to catch like a beanbag. Um, and, uh, they, I think they're easier to catch. Hmm. So it's usually Russians. Okay. And uh, the, you make them yourself, or? Uh, yeah, I actually have never bought a Russian ball. <laughs> um, even before I really was obsessed with making my own props, uh, I saw my buddy making them, and it just seemed like a silly thing to buy. All right. And uh, when you're practicing, what, what's, a, what's something you do, or what's a tip you have for others to be better practicers? Um, well, I, I, uh, personally, I think it's important not to go too hard on the same trick, uh, in one long run. I think it's really easy to get frustrated and it almost is detrimental to learning or working on any pattern because you can kind of, you progress and you progress and then you get frustrated and it can go downhill really quick. I think it's important to you know, take a breath, maybe move to another prop or another pattern and then come back to it. Um, because there are patterns that I've written off just because I spent two hours on them and went, Nope. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, and the more you do it, the more frustrated you get, the worse you get at it. So then you're just practicing bad habits. Exactly. Um, That's a great tip. Don't spend too much time on the same trick. All right. So how have you seen juggling impact your life? Um, Oh, there's so many ways. Um, for starters, uh, with what I do professionally in the summers, um, I could never, I was a skateboarder for a lot of years and I can't really afford to risk being injured. So there was definitely this absence of a creative outlet for me for the first couple years that I was doing it. And once I got back into juggling, it really filled that void nicely because it was it was it was a chance to learn tricks, but then put my own style on it, and uh, so it was, it's great. It's a great way to vent, um, but it's also juggling more than any hobby I've ever had. Uh, I think instills a persistence that carries over to every other aspect of life. That you know you have to basically overcome failure on a mm-hmm. daily basis as a juggler. And I, I think that's that's been huge for me. Hmm. Yeah, before the interview, you were telling me about how in skateboarding, uh, a, a big part of skateboarding is messing up and that skateboarders will make videos doing all kinds of great tricks. And at the end, they'll show all the mess ups, all the people falling down and, you know, hurting themselves and, you know, just you know, not being perfect. And uh, is and and that's almost something you kind of want to bring a little bit to the juggling community. Yeah, um you know, I think I think 
with especially since juggling does teach you to kind of not treat failures as failures but rather a, a stepping stone to success um I can't say I'm the only person that does it, but I definitely try to incorporate whenever I, I do a juggling video, I always throw some uh, some failures in there because with skateboarding, it's almost it's this humorous aspect. Like you you kind of you love to see somebody just wiping out just yard sale limbs everywhere. Um, so it's really funny, but there's also this aspect of uh, not necessarily in the bail section, but in a skateboarding video, you'll see somebody struggling with a trick over and over and over and just eating it. And then they show them land the trick. And it's just, as the viewer, you have this feeling in your heart where you're just like, oh, they got it. <laughs> and it's awesome. And um, I, like, I can't, I by no means can say that I'm the only juggler that, you know, puts failure in the videos on purpose, but uh, it's definitely something that I, I do deliberately because I think it's important. It's, you know, you can't, I couldn't have caught all the balls I caught unless I dropped some. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I, I won't say that I focus on that, but I definitely try to give it its little moment. Mm -hmm. um, every ball dropped is a, a step on a, a longer journey. And uh, we need to look back and appreciate the whole thing. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, uh, is there anything I haven't asked that you want to talk about? I don't know. Uh, one thing I kind of wanted to talk about is, um, and, and this could go on forever, but I, I kind of want to talk about, like, you know, if everything, if all the pieces fall into place, uh, what would be really cool to do with uh, this, what I'm hoping will become a company? Um, so in that regard, I'd like you to ask anything that may pop into your mind or I can just, you know, get on my soapbox and start testifying. Uh, you know, I, that is, I mean, that definitely, I think that's a question I have and probably everybody has is, you know, what's the, what's the final goal? What's the, what's the point? And, uh, and yeah, so I'd love to hear your soapbox. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, uh, thank you for asking me that question I asked you to ask me. Uh, um, well, obviously, you know, uh, the, the main focus uh, is going to be producing awesome props cheap. And uh, that's, that's what I, I'm going to focus on first. But I think if this does really take off, it would afford me the opportunity to do a bunch of other really cool things. Um, like kind of giving a base to a community like you know if i set up a store one day it'd be really cool to have people be able to come in you know check out props juggle in the corner maybe do classes or you know if somebody just wants to come in and shoot the breeze um so it'd be really cool to have a place that's just constantly open like almost like a you know 40 hour a week juggling club mm -hmm. <laughs> um but it it would also be really cool to uh, not necessarily do outreach programs, but you know have a be able to have a base to kind of do outreach programs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like you know, go to schools, uh, talk to kids, um, basically tout the the benefits of juggling, but also you know have. Just just be the guy <laughs> in the neighborhood that, you know, not necessarily uh, the most gifted juggler, but uh, I know enough that I think I could help shape the, uh, the youth of America. And, um, you know, it's a, it'd be cool to be a forum for aspiring jugglers. Mm -hmm. So not just producing props cheap, but having that as uh, something that propels you into doing even more good stuff using juggling. Yeah, kind of. Um, I, I think, you know, if this, if, if the Broke Jugglers project goes well, it'd be an amazing springboard to lead into even more cool stuff that, um, I'm very community oriented. I think, uh, you know, if people can help out, they, they should, and it'd be really cool. I think there's so many things that could lead from this if this first part goes really well. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, kind of. 
that's awesome. It sounds like you have a really great heart and I'm excited to see what happens with it and partner with you and support you in any way I can. Well, Hey, this, this is huge for me. Um, I, I, I can't even tell you where, where my head was at when I saw that you mentioned me in the first place. Uh, it was, it really touched me. So thank you. Welcome. At least I could do. Uh, now, uh, if people wanted to find you just to see what you've posted, whether it's juggling or the broke jugglers project, or if they want to support you with some monies, where can they find you? Okay. Um, well, uh, I've been kind of using my Facebook page. Uh, it's facebook.com slash broke jugglers project. Um, kind of using that as my base for operations. Um, I'm also on YouTube as the broke juggler. Um, and my GoFundMe page is just GoFundMe slash broke juggler. Um, I'm looking into starting up a website, but it doesn't exist yet. So, okay. uh, those are the, the big three. All right. We'll make sure all that stuff is in the notes. And, uh, is there anything we can look forward to when it comes to the Burke Juggler project? Um, well, uh, I won't say by popular demand, but, uh, I, I am slowing down on videos. I, I definitely was excited that first week and was put, putting out something every day and, uh, you know, not necessarily adding content to the world. Um, so I am going to slow down, but it also afford me the ability to kind of focus on each video a little bit more. And, um, I'm really, I just want to hit everything, not, not just, you know, talk about what I'm trying to do, but, you know, maybe do some instructionals, maybe, uh, some instructionals on how to build props well, or, uh, just talks, talking about stuff. <laughs> All right. Okay, so you have the last word. What are some words of inspiration for the juggling community at large? Uh never stop rocking. Uh just and and I think any serious juggler is just going to go, well, duh. But uh, you know, just always continue to to push yourself and, you know, I'd say never give up, but you won't. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again so much for being with us. And uh, everybody watching, thanks for tuning in to this edition of Just in Time. <laughs> Everyday Juggler Profiles. And say hi to my little Ava Grace. And until next time, keep on juggling. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, be sure to support the channel. Leave a comment, like, Share and subscribe.